I've heard a lot of people talking about the growth of private credit, but at the expense of interest in private equity. I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it, okay. because obviously private credit to a large extent exists to support the private equity industry. Mm -hmm. I might just rephrase it to say that private credit is growing at a faster rate than private equity. Mm -hmm. And it's really for two reasons. One is specific to private equity, which is uh, most institutional investors are over allocated to the asset class. And number two, transaction volumes are slow. Obviously the market is going through a period of price discovery. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to buy and it's hard to sell. Private credit, on the other hand, much more uh, significant addressable market opportunity. And in a world of uncertainty, high cash coupon, short duration, senior secured. So frankly, a more, uh, an easier asset class to underwrite and invest in. Well, right well I saw last quarter, it was like you pulled in something like 11 billion or so uh, into those credit funds. I am curious as to whether you think that pace that you've seen lately is going to continue. You see an increase in allocation to, to private credit? I do, I think yeah. so. The denominator yeah. effect that people are seeing in private equity doesn't really exist in private credit. Mm -hmm. I think most people we talk to, be they institutions or retail, would like to see their private credit allocation double mm -hmm. uh, from where it is today. So still a lot of runway. Speaking of doubling allocations from the investor side, what about the investment opportunity? I want to take a moment to realize today was one of the big, biggest banking failures in American history. Just after we saw one of the other yeah. biggest banking failures yeah. in American history, a lot of talk about you and your rivals around these pools of capital. How big is that opportunity to jump in there and provide capital to the elite regional banks, uh, buy loan books, uh, be a partner to these banks? I think it's pretty significant. So you have to think about the opportunity set for us being created as the secondary market, i.e. can we go in as a collaborative, friendly capital partner, thought partner, to some of these banks who frankly have more balance sheet challenges than we do. Uh, liquidity issues really not credit issues. And so, as you'd expect, we've been in dialogue with a number of banks about how we could be a, a helpful solution provider. I think the bigger opportunity is really going to be what happens in the primary market. Clearly, we're going to need to see some credit contraction here, some pause in lending, maybe some increased regulation. And therefore, I would expect that middle market companies, middle market real estate, asset owners are going to need to look to the private markets. You know, Romain, funded. when we talk to some of Aries' big rivals, they tell us that they are leaning uphill here, that they are lending to bigger and bigger companies. What kind of opportunity then do you see to lend to middle market companies and what kind of yield comes with that? You know, it's interesting. Aries, although we have $360 billion of assets, is still a middle market first investment platform across the board. And so while we also are seeing an opportunity to invest in larger borrowers across the spectrum, demand from your typical middle market companies and assets is still strong. We'd expect that. The challenge is going to be, as you point out, in this interest rate environment, a pretty plain vanilla senior loan for many borrowers is in the low double digits right now. A lot of competition in this space. Are there too many players in it right now? I don't think there are enough players, to really? be honest with you. The, the private credit dollars that have been raised mm -hmm. are still a fraction of the equity dollars looking for financing. Mm -hmm. And as the leveraged finance markets slow down and the banks contract, I think we're going to see an acute need for capital for sure. Does that mean you, need, you have an acute need for more talent? Are you hiring? We are absolutely hiring, a little yeah. bit contrarian here. I yeah. think markets like this are a real opportunity to upgrade talent, add talent, scale new businesses. So yeah, we've been net hiring pretty significantly this year. Realistically, how many people can you bring on this year, especially with the dialogue you see coming out of the banks? I'm sure that there's a lot of supply in the market right now, yeah, too. I think, frankly, the, the constraint is going to be our own ability to interview and process folks. You know, we've gone through a very significant period of growth in 2021. We grew our headcount by 45%, 2022 by another 20. So that was both acquisition and organic. So we're digesting, mm -hmm. investing in the people we have, creating opportunities for them to scale. But uh, you know, I think you'll see us end the year with another couple hundred I want to go back a minute to that idea of the middle market here because there's a sense too that the reason people are not lending to the middle market is because they're worried about the risk profile. Uh, how do you see this playing out? I mean, do you think that there are going to be more bankruptcies ahead and how do you avoid falling into those pitfalls? Yeah, I, I don't really view it through the lens of bankruptcy versus non-bankruptcy. Obviously, the economy is actually still on good footing. and We just put out our earnings for Aries Capital Corporation which is a very good proxy for what we're seeing. And we saw EBITDA growth in that portfolio year over year, 
interest coverage is coming down, obviously given the base rate environment, but there's a significant amount of equity support in a lot of these structures. So we're still seeing defaults muted, non-approvals are in and around 2%, so below historical level. So if rates stay higher for longer and earnings recede a little bit, we'll see a little bit more stress, but we're not really calling for a severe, severe spike. And the business right now, when it comes to secondaries, can you talk yeah. a little bit about uh, how that fits into this environment? Yeah, I think when you're thinking about alternatives and their role in resolving issues in this market, it really comes down to who has liquidity and who's able to extend the runway to asset and company owners to a lower base rate environment. That's really what we're talking about because banks, institutional investors, this isn't a credit issue, it's a liquidity issue. So a lot of what we're doing now is structured solutions to help people get duration in their portfolio. And secondaries is going to be a very meaningful part of that solution. When we talk about liquidity issues, obviously there's been a lot of discussion about the Fed, the whatever's been taken out of the system by its quantitative tidying, by its raising interest rates. We just had a headline a while ago about Janet Yellen providing Congress with another look at when we get to that proverbial X date when it comes to the debt ceiling. Early June, how much are you factoring that into your outlook? Look, we're, we're micro investors that are macro aware, so we can't ignore it. My hope is that this is a little bit political theater and we're going to get to the right answer mm -hmm. as we have in the past. I think it would be a huge mistake uh, if we let this lapse. Obviously not a great time to be to be dealing with that, so hopefully we'll find a resolution here soon. The reality is how much tighter are financial conditions looking to get between the rate hikes and the QT that is coming? I don't have a great crystal ball. My hope is we see one more hike and then a pause, digest new information and let the bank contraction take hold before we, we start tightening again, but I actually think some of the contraction in the credit markets actually will do the Fed's work for it. You know, there's another place we haven't talked about yet, a chorus of warnings around commercial real estate. How worried are you? I'm not that worried, but it's always hard when we're having conversations like this. When you say commercial real estate, it's a big market globally and it's a big market in the U.S. We're seeing different uh, opportunities and risks in the Sun Belt versus San Francisco or, or New York. So it's hard to paint it with a broad brush. Maybe stating the obvious, the office market in many large cities is challenged. It's going to take some time to work through that, but in other segments of the market, multifamily, industrial, student housing, data centers, we're continuing to see strong growth, strong demand, strong rent. So I think viewed across the entirety of the CRE landscape, got to keep an eye on it, but I wouldn't say that we're extraordinarily worried about it. All right, I think we only have about a minute left. It's been such a serious conversation. I know, Chanel let's light it up a little bit. I told Chanel, I asked him about sports. <laughs> right, about sports. I, in all it's seriousness, though, yes. I, I, well, I mean, the, the investments, the investments you have there, but more yeah. importantly, I guess just how that industry has changed so much in terms of what the fans want, and yep. then I guess how you have to market this, these teams now. So it's, it's interesting, we do have a large sports investment yeah. franchise. Yeah. Um, what's fundamentally changed is two things that we need to understand. One, the value of live unscripted content continues to grow and there's really no better live unscripted content than sports. Yeah. So it's really becoming a global content opportunity. And two, if you look at sports values, just for teams, let alone everything in the sports ecosystem, we've seen 15% annual compound growth in value. Yeah. Frankly, there's only so many rich people and so many banks that are willing to support that kind of growth. So what's really happening now is we're seeing an institutionalization of the asset class where folks like us are raising capital and expertise and the leagues and teams are now more open to thinking about governance and, and, and those types of things to help the, the Agree to disagree. Control. News is better live That's, than scripted well, content. I mean, look at what we're doing right here, right? It's amazing. <laughs>